Is Airbnb a casual home sharing service or something more like a professional short term rental operation? Therein lies a point of contention between the company and the hotel industry, and it could have severe legal repercussions. Joining us to explain is WSJ reporter Chris Kirkham. Chris, thanks for being with us. Now, the hotel industry issued a stern analysis of Airbnb, painting the company as more of a rental operation. Why are hotels taking issue with Airbnb's business model? Right. So, I mean, I think uh, the question here comes down to, uh, you know, I think the hotel industry has um, kind of been at the forefront of lobbying for some of these regulations uh, in, in cities uh, against Airbnb. And I think the question, I mean, I mean, some of it comes down to taxes, you know, basically there's a question of whether uh, Airbnb hosts, um, you know, people who own these properties and rent them out, whether whether they're paying the same amount of uh, taxes that a hotel would, you know, room and board kind of taxes. And then there's also a whole suite of other regulatory issues that hotels might have to, you know, to deal with in a city as far as inspections and sort of just general compliance costs that they feel Airbnb uh, Airbnb hosts and Airbnb does not comply with, and um, so this has been a this has been sort of an ongoing uh, battle for for a few years now. Um, so I so, would imagine yeah, I mean, the that, hotel industry feels a little bit like, hey, this isn't we're not on even ground. It's not a fair playing field, and you're stealing away travelers who might otherwise book with us. Exactly, and you know, I think you know it, it depends on what city you're in, but you know, often uh, Airbnb uh, rates, nightly room rates, can be uh, can be more attractive, can be less than hotel rooms, and so you know, they feel you know, without these, uh, you know, if Airbnb doesn't have the same kind of compliance costs or taxes, uh, sure. that you know, essentially. Right, it's not it's not level. So let's look at the at the report and where did the hotel industry get a lot of the information in this report? So they actually uh, they funded the report, but they had uh, CBRE, which is a uh, real estate uh, research firm uh, brokerage. They um, they actually performed the report uh, on behalf of the uh, American Hotel and Lodging Association, uh, and so so um, it was an interesting uh, it was a very interesting report because they there's this site called Air DNA that actually sort of. Um, you know, has a has a system that essentially gathers and scrapes data on Airbnb's listings, and has done this for a few years now. And so they took data from uh, from Air DNA, and then essentially kind of kind of analyzed it and figured out basically what you know listings that were on Airbnb. Uh, you know, connected it to the hosts who were who were um, you know advertising those listings, and then sort of looked at the room rates, and then calculated um, you know if that room was filled, um, what the revenue would have been, and right. so it sort of broke out all of these all of these categories, and was able to sort of break out you know what revenue is attributed to what host, gotcha. um, and so then they looked at kind of. They looked at also the characteristics of the host. So, were you a host who uh, was just renting out, you know, a room in a house, or uh, you know, maybe even a shared room in a house, or were you renting out an entire property, or were you renting out multiple properties at the same time? And is renting out multiple properties or renting out the entire property are, are these sorts of things against the regulations of certain cities? Yeah. Well, so I mean, I, I think a lot of cities really didn't have um, didn't have a regulatory regime that that kind of directly addressed this, and so different cities have taken different stances over time. But this question of this question of multiple, uh, you know. Uh, basically, a, a host on Airbnb who has multiple properties. That that's been at the center of um, you know a lot of these uh, debates in in cities. Um, and so, uh, in, you know, in certain cases, there have been uh, pushes to to limit uh, the number of days you can list properties. Um, you know, and then other other in other cases, they've tried to have you know you know restrictions where uh, a host can only uh, host one property at a time. Um, so hotel and then chains are in yet other cases. Are they sort of saying, well, if Go you're ahead, one sorry. host and you're renting out a bunch of different properties, how are you different from a hotel chain? Is that sort of their point? 
I think, yeah, that's the idea. Is it basically, is this an illegal hotel operation? Um, you know, and, and are you just using this as a business as opposed to, um, you know, maybe you rent out your, your, your home when you're out of town on business or on a vacation and you want to make a little bit of money. And that's, that's kind of been the tension here is that, you know, one of the main kind of marketing uh, messages that Airbnb has gotten out is that, um, you know, this is, this is essentially a way for people to, to get, get a little extra income. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a way to help the middle class um, use assets that they have. Sure. And so I think this report, what they were, what they were trying to do was kind of uh, ferret out how much of, how much of the activity on Airbnb is that, and then how much is sort of, um, you know, being done by uh, by hosts who are essentially have have chains of properties that so, they're um, that they're renting out. So, what is the hotel industry hoping will happen as a result of this report? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I, I spoke with um, the executive director of the American Hotel and Lodging Association. She said, um, you know, I think I think they're hoping that um, that you know, cities, regulators will, will take a look at this and, um, you know, kind of use it to maybe do their own analysis in their own markets. Um, you know, I, I think the idea is that they would, that they now have, um, at least they're, they're arguing that they now have data that they can, they can bring and show to, um, regulators to, you know, to and, city councils, right. regulators, exactly. Right. So as of you know, noon Thursday, um, has Airbnb responded to this report? Not yet. We are still waiting on, uh, on comment from them. Right. Now, we do know that Airbnb has yielded in certain major cities, large markets, London and Amsterdam. Correct? They now have caps on the uh, length of the stays. That's right. Yeah, that was, um, you know, that was, you know, I think early on Airbnb uh, tended to kind of um, take a very, uh, uh, very defensive approach and they fought a lot of the cities that were attempting to regulate. But I think uh, lately they've, they've, um, they've kind of been softening that, that stance and uh, sort of shown more of a willingness to work with, um, with cities and, and come up with compromises that, that would sort of allow them to still operate in some cases. And so, yeah, in some cases like, like um, London and Amsterdam, um, there were limitations on the number of, of days that you could rent out a property so that, you, you know, it wasn't essentially a 365-day-a-year type of um, enterprise. Right. All right. Chris Kirkham, thank you so much for that.